I got saved 17 years ago. Uh, till then I was a rebel, running from God, uh, not wanting to have anything to do with Him. I was, uh, I was in the bars, I was drinking, I was, uh, thought I lived a good life. But obviously I didn't know what life was before I met Jesus when I was 30 years old. So that's the short version. Maybe I'll give you my full testimony some other time. I would like to share something for you uh, from the Bible. I have a beautiful Bible I got from a friend and uh, this Bible I, uh, I look for gold. I love the scriptures, I love the Bible, but <clears throat> I was thinking about sharing something that is precious to me. I, I'm not going to look up all the pages because it takes a lot of time, but if you want to, I can give you uh, the references uh, at a later date. But I want to give you the big picture. You know, when God created Adam and Eve, it was a beautiful picture. He created them perfect. He created them like he wanted to, and he said it was good. And then, um, we have to go further back. Because when God created Adam, he made him out of the earth, you know. And he formed him, and he made the shape, and he made, I, I guess, Adam was a beautiful creature. But there was no life. But God, who wanted to be together with the, the with Adam, he. It says in 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 the first book, it says, Genesis. It says that God took his mouth and he breathed life into Adam. And how did he do that? Was he sitting up in heaven in a, in a throne room uh, thinking, oh, I'll just blow some wind down? No, God himself bowed down after shaping him with his own hands. God himself bowed down mouth to mouth, face to face with this person, with Adam. Face to face, nose to nose. And then he blowed the breath of life into Adam. And Adam became a living creature. And I, I can't stop thinking about the first thing that Adam saw. The first thing, thing he saw when he came to life. When he opened his eyes, what could it have been? Could it have been the beautiful garden, the trees, the waters, the fish, the animals? No. The first thing that he saw when he opened his eyes was right in the eyes of God. Can you imagine? So close, so tender, so nose to nose with his creator. I believe that was the, uh, the intentional plan of God. He wanted to be that close. And that the only thing that Adam wanted to look at was in the eyes of God. And the only thing God wanted to do was to look into the eyes of Adam. But then, you know, he created the woman and, you know, the, the story. So we are not going to stop there and not let, the, no, not let your mind go wandering now. Because now I'm going to take you to the terrible thing that happened. The, the terrible thing that happened was that human beings looked at other things, at themselves, and they fell. And you know, the snake in the garden and all the terrible things that happened there that made people uh, go away from God. God had to throw them out of the garden. He could not, after that point, he could not 
look Adam and Eve in the eye face to face anymore. It was impossible. Because they had sin in their life. They had disobeyed God. They listened to the to the snake or the devil if you want. They they did what they were not supposed to do. They were away from God. They have walked away in a distance and they kept a distance and then the bad thing happened. Well, when we read through the scriptures, we see that God wants to be together with people, but he can't. Because of the sin, because of the troubles, because of everything that, <clears throat> uh, that people do. And God is a holy God. You can't look God in the eye and have sin in your life. Because the Bible says, then you will die. And Moses, he came to a point. And he was a man that talked to God face to face, the Bible says. Well, Moses, he came to a point where he said, if your face does not go with me, I can't go. And God, it's a long story, but God, he says, I will go with you. But Moses, he goes even further, he says, and even he knows he might die from it. He says, I need to see your face, God. I need to see your face. Show me your face. Show me your glory. And God can't help himself. He, he says, okay, I'll do the best I can. So I will hide you in the rocks. And as I pass by, you won't see me, but when, when I pass, you can look out and you can see me from behind. What a beauty. God wanted so badly to show himself to Moses, even though Moses could die from it. Because Moses was a man under the law. Well, the law came later on, but you know, he was not... A pure person because of the sin in the garden. So God says, okay, I'll let you see me from, the, from behind. And the beauty is, you can read it, it says, it happened that way. And God went with Moses into the promised land. But Moses He didn't get in himself because of he did he did his wrong because but his bones were in there. Okay, so if you wanted to correct me in that, I know that uh, that Moses did not walk into the promised land, but God promised to go with his people into the promised land, and they took the bones of Moses with them, so he got there. Well, anyway, I'm getting to the point. Well, <clears throat> you see now. The whole Bible starts with face to face, a pure look in the eye of God. And then sin comes, and the only way to see God is from behind, from the back. He's turned, he's, he has turned his back on us. But he longs to be with us. And he has a plan, you know. Jesus comes. And the beauty, and the beauty in this, if you can see it, I, I, can, I, I, I can see the beauty of it. The beauty is when Jesus is born by Mary, she is probably the first one that can look in the eyes of God again. The face of Jesus, the little child, God born in a human being. When Jesus was born, people could again look in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Jesus. The angels said they were to name him Emmanuel, God with us. And I wonder, I wonder the joy of heaven when God again could look into the eyes of a human being through the body of Jesus. I can imagine the joy 
of heaven. And then you know, Jesus grew up. The Son of God. He grew up. And then it comes to, it gets, he gets to be 30 years old, approximately. And he does nothing wrong. He lives by the law. He's a Jew. He does nothing wrong. He has no sin in his life. And at 30 years old, he comes to the to the River Jordan, where John the Baptist, the, the Baptist. Well, I'm struggling a bit with the language, but I'm trying. Well, John, his cousin, is baptizing people in water, and he comes and he sees, uh, and, and 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 John says, "Behold, the Lamb of God." John sees him, and he knows who he is, and he comes face to face with him, the Lamb of God, and he baptizes him in the river. And when Jesus comes up, you know, the heavens open, the, the heavens render, and, <clears throat> and God says, this is my son, the beloved, and the Holy Spirit comes down and stays over him. And that's one of my favorite parts, that the Holy Spirit comes. Well, I'm not to preach about this now. I'm trying to preach about face-to-face -face with God. Well, anyway, <clears throat> later on, you see through the scriptures, you see story by story by story how Jesus faces people, how he comes to them face-to-face -face and, he, and he talks to them. You can see... Uh, the, the woman that had been uh, sick, I don't know the word in English uh, right now, uh, she had a blood disease and had been sick for so many years. She was not allowed to be with people. And, and Jesus was walking. He was on his way to another place. And he was walking. <clears throat> and he had some business to do because someone had been calling him, come, you have to pray for my sick my sick servant or sick daughter. Well, he was engaged and there was a lot of people and he, had, he was really busy. And this this lady was not allowed because she was unclean because of blood disease. Well, she pushed herself. She, she, she grabbed the, 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 the end of his mantle and she, and she, and at the moment that she did that, there was a force, there was a power, power, that's the right word. There was a power that came out of Jesus and healed her instantly. Well, she came up from behind. This unclean woman, the, the law said that she was unclean. She was unworthy of anything from God. Well, she comes up from behind and in that moment when she touches his garment, well, the beauty is, then Jesus turns around and he faces her. He stops what he's doing and he faces her and he looks her in the eye and he talks to her. And you have a beautiful moment between an unclean woman and the clean Son of God. And in that instant, I she received Christ. The Bible doesn't say so. It says that she was healed and he said, your faith has healed you and, and he said that you are free. She was free. She was set free by Jesus himself. But the point is, she could only see him from behind. She touched him from behind. But he wanted to see her. He wanted to look her in the eye. So he turned around and he looked at her and he talked to her and he, he raised her up from the deepest, deepest and he raised her up and we can read about her in the Bible today. Such a beautiful story, how Jesus turns around. You have the, those blind guys, Jesus was walking, walking, he was going somewhere else and they shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Yeah. And then, you can read about it, it's so beautiful, 
But Jesus stops and he turns around and he says, Who is calling? Who is calling my name? Son of David, who is calling my name? And he turns around and he sets those people free from blindness. Jesus turns around anytime you ask him to. Anytime you cry out for him, he says, call on my name and I will turn to you. I will turn to you. If you turn to me, I will turn to you and I will look you right in the eye and I will ask you, what do you need from me? And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Now, I'm getting to the beautiful point. Well, everything is beautiful with Jesus, so I'll say just beautiful again and again. Well, you can read it again and again how Jesus turns and how he looks at people and how he takes care of them. But the beautiful thing I want to, to read to you is from Luke chapter 22. And here we have Peter, the beautiful Peter. Peter was a wild man. He did not do anything right. The only thing he did was love Jesus. He was, an Im he was impulsive. He was doing things before he, his brain got to go with him. He jumped out of the boat. He walked on water. He said, whoa, I am going to be your biggest hero, Jesus. I am going to the cross with you. I am going to die with you. I'll go to prison. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am going to be the big man by your side. I'll never forsake you. And he has the big words and the big confessions. And he's so eager and he's so willing. But Jesus says, well, you will, you will deny me. Three times you will deny me. And he says, no, never. Yes, you will deny me. You know, Jesus prayed for him, so... Well, anyways, Peter, he was the wild man. Well, when Jesus was in the Gethsemane crying and weeping and, and having the battle of his life and, and the blood and everything, Peter was sleeping. He didn't pay attention. When, his, when the love of his life, when Jesus... The master that he said, "You, I wouldn't, I will never leave your side, Jesus." When he had the battle of his life in Gethsemane, Peter was sleeping, snoring, I guess. Well, that's a good Christian, right? Well, and when they came to get Jesus, when they came to to, to fetch him, when they came to capture him, they came with sticks. They came with with a, a big army, they came with a loud sound to get Jesus to take him, like a, a, some some dangerous criminal. And then Peter rose, oh, wow, oh, I have a knife, I'll just cut off someone's ear. Now I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight for you, Jesus. So he cuts off the ear of the soldier, and Jesus says, no, Peter, no, no, this, this is not the way, no. And Jesus picks up the ear and he, he puts it back on the soldier and heals him and he goes with him. I guess at that point Peter was quite confused. Uh, maybe he didn't know what was happening. Maybe he he got scared. I don't know. He, I, I love Peter. He, he was so human. <laughs> well, when they took Jesus away, he says that Peter followed at a distance and that's not good it's, it is not good to follow Jesus at a distance because anything can happen if you get a distance from God anything could happen you see Adam and Eve they were at a distance and they messed up well Peter he followed at a distance and then it, as you read the story, you see that Jesus was mocked. He was. Uh, they beat him. They they threw him on the ground. They did horrible things to him. And while this was happening, Peter was sitting by the fire, away from Jesus, just looking maybe 
seeing all the things happening from the, the corner of his eye, but he didn't do anything. And then three people come. First a, a little lady, a little young lady, a maiden I think, and then two others. And they say, oh, you are with him. You are, you are one of his disciples, aren't you? And the three times he denies, just like Jesus said. Just like he said he wouldn't. Oh no, I will never deny you, Jesus. Well, Peter did. Three times. But the beauty, the beauty in this, if you can see it, the beauty in this dark hour where Jesus is beaten, he is mocked, he is, he, they pull him from side to side, they are doing terrible things to him. And right there Peter is sitting and he is, his heart is dark, he's, he's, the only light he has is the fire. And then on the, on the, on, as the sentence stops, as he says the third time, I do not know him, Jesus turns and looks at him. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It says, <clears throat> Luke chapter 23, and uh, from uh, verse 34, having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now, when they had kindled the fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat amongst them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked in intently at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You also are of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another com confidentially affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter right in the eye. Can you see? Peter did everything wrong. Peter messed up so badly. But God, Jesus, turned around from everything he was busy with. I think he had his hands full. But he chose to turn around and look Peter in the eye. I don't know what the what the look was. I, I really don't know because it, the Bible doesn't say so. But Jesus was love on two legs. Jesus was love. Love has to look like something people say when I hear preachers. I think love has to look like something. Love has to look like Jesus. I think Peter met the look of Jesus, not of condemnation, but of love. Because Jesus was love in a person. God's love in a person. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. You know? John 3.16 Peter Right there, when he had denied Jesus, he had done anything, everything wrong. He thought everything was over. And love turns and looks him in the eye. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful how God has turned around. God, you, you no longer need to look at the, the back of God. You can look him right in the eye. And you can let him breathe his life into you again. Don't turn away when he looks at you. Let him look at you. Let him come close. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, you have to come very close to see that the Lord is good. So, um, I just wanted to share my heart with you on these things because it's so beautiful. And later on, you can read that God meets Peter. Well, Jesus 
meets Peter at the shore. And Jesus gives him the chance to three times say, Yes, Jesus, you know that I love you. To give a response. And Peter became a great leader. He became a great apostle. He became a man who met love on two legs that transformed him. You see, God is not mad at you. God does not come to condemn you. God loves you so much that he only wants you to lift up your eyes and look in his eyes and let him change you and blow his type of life into you and to give you grace and mercy and that you can give up your own life and take his life. And when you use his life in your life, you will see that he will provide. He will give you everything you need. He will give you the love that you need, the love that you seek. He will give you your acceptance. He will always turn around. If you turn to him, he will turn to you. And you can look him right in the eye. And when you see him face to face, you will see that he does not condemn you. He loves you. And he wants the best for you, always. Let me pray for you before I close. Dear Jesus, I pray for the people that are watching. I pray for the person sitting, watching right now. I pray for anyone in the sound of my voice that you will touch them. I pray, Jesus, that you will give them what their hearts desire. But I pray most of all that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit and love and that you will give them the revelation of who you really are. Jesus, I thank you for turning around when we call for you. I thank you that you are seated at the throne facing us, that we have access. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful person watching. I thank you for this beautiful person watching that you come with healing. I pray that you heal everyone in the sound of my voice with your precious love. I pray that any disease they may have just goes away because you love them. Show them your love, Jesus. I want you to look people right in the eye. Help them to lift their head up from the dust and look you in the eye. Amen and amen. So now, God bless you and thank you for listening. See you next time.